Brick exclusive YouTube channel with Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist. I don't practice as a theologist anymore, but I do have decades of extensive knowledge and experience that I would like to apply in these teachings. I do not advise anybody to go on a dating site. I think the elements of hunting, as it were, a partner, are taken for granted. I think it becomes more of shopping for a t-shirt or a pair of shoes or some other kind of item that has no feelings or emotions. I think um, the art of relationship now has become weakened and the deeper meanings of a relationship as in terms of navigating each other's feelings and each other's minds and um, having a, a two-in-one style of relationship has descended as it were in terms of its strength usually if you're in a relationship it's going to be triangulated to some extent um, throughout the journey um, be it for positive or negative reasons i think the negative the second the negative is the part where a lot of relationships fall down now because triangulation can not only mean interaction with other people but also outside in social media influences, the um, emotional uh, connections people make through the internet, even though you're only holding a phone in your hand, it can distract people from their responsibilities within the relationship, where they're getting validation and attention from or through the phone, through third parties, that's triangulation. Um, and... The effort that needs to go into a healthy functioning relationship and these arts and skills are slipping away. There's nothing more fulfilling and more satisfying than being in harmony with somebody else, knowing that everything's running all right, all issues are by the way, trust is enforced, um, vision is instilled, values are applied, security is indulged. Um, what we are finding today is too many relationships are uh, falling apart, as again, as I always say, by unresolved. Now, unresolved can be a aggressive problem in terms of it's out in the open for everyone to see. Um, it can be addressed, but for different psychological or relationship reasons, it's not going to be. Other problems can be passive, um, third party outside the relationship, uh, internal psychological issue with the partner, um, but all ultimately are based on elements of unresolved. <clears throat> now, <coughs> excuse me. Now, a lot of people can find themselves weakened to the skills and the disciplines required to work your way through problems within a relationship to keep intimacy flourishing. Some people don't need to do that. They're just happy to ignore problems until they jump out at them and then wonder why things fall to pieces um, and have no self-awareness or relationship awareness enough to fix things as they go and this is what causes a lot of trauma um, for people um, a, a element of ignorance or lackadaisicalness where things could have been fixed but due to the outlook on life or the characteristics in that person they've decided or were unable to see certain aspects going on within their partner, where they didn't pay enough attention to, or within themselves that they just weren't aware of, um, that were affecting the partner, that ultimately causes a breakdown and possibly a break up. 
I don't believe people want to fight. I don't believe people want to have trouble. I honestly do genuinely believe, believe people come into a relationship to flourish. But where evil starts to manifest, it's going to intimate, in, immediate, well, immediately and ultimately cause division, <clears throat> especially if it's spotted. Usually manifesting in small negligences, micro negligences, um, or deliberate. Some people deliberately set out to wreck things because they don't know how to um, get out of the relationship that they're in. So they'll sabotage it. And this isn't uncommon. Relationships that have been enjoyed, and as I said at the beginning of the video, there's nothing more fulfilling and satisfying than knowing that you've got somebody on board, they're not triangulated, um, and everything's running to purpose. But what happens when grievance start to arise? Well, they need to be confronted. But what if you're with somebody that's not willing to do that, but they keep showing up? Well... You've got to determine why, what's happening here. Is it drug related? Is it psychologically related? Is it because it's a um, person of the family or somebody close to that person where they're not willing to um, bring a confrontation into the situation? All these things you have to weigh out about whether that person's going to be healthy for you or not. And... Um, a lot of the time, unfortunately, they just turn out not to be. And this is where breakups take place. Now, everybody will move on and everybody will find somebody else and that person um, can possibly, will possibly go on. But that's none of your business. When you break up with somebody, it's your business to heal, resolve yourself, look at the areas where you could have done better um, and apply a better version of yourself in the next relationship. See, it's no good going backwards in trying to move forwards. And this is unfortunately how a lot of people are now. They're going backwards to move forwards and it doesn't work. It doesn't work because If you've experienced a breakup and you've been honest with yourself and asked yourself why that's happened and you're failing to address the issues and aspects of the part you played in that relationship breakdown, then it's going to happen again. And what happens to these people is ultimately they check out. They go asexual, which means they just find ways of satisfying themselves. Um, And they stay where it's safe for them not to be um, caught up in how people react to their dysfunction or how people react to your dysfunction. See, part of life's journey is to, um, in a constructive and creative way, become better within ourselves. That's part of the responsibility we have with life to become a better person within ourselves so that if we do meet somebody, we can perform those characteristics and present ourselves to that person in a way in which is going to be rewarding for them. So you want to be a reward for somebody, not a detriment. Uh, But unfortunately, if you meet somebody that's self-privileged or self-grandized, Um, possibly a victim or some other characteristic that they're driving themselves on uh, that's not necessarily just approaching a relationship from a normal aspect, then you're not going to be able to sustain a healthy position in that relationship because the relationship's not established on normally aspirated emotional quantums, as it were, cycles. The human human psyche cycles around um, and it has a nat- 
naturally aspirated, aspirated way in which it does that. And when people are on substances, even nicotine, alcohol and weed and all these other things, medications, it disrupts the naturally aspirated cycles of the soul. For instance, most people that are on medications, drugs, alcohol, weed, their sex drive will be accelerated. They'll need more sex because it's sped up the cycle of that aspect of their life. Um, and that can be a problem for somebody that's naturally aspirated or it could be, depending on compatibility, convenient as well. Depends. Depends on compatibilities. But there's nothing richer, nothing wiser, nothing more rewarding than having a relationship that's functioning well, where everyone's at peace, where there's no negligences, where nobody's intimately ghosting people, which is a form of, it's always a manipulation. If somebody's not answering your texts or um, leaving you on hold, that's manipulation, whether they want to receive it or not. And you really don't have to stand for that. You've got to speak up and say either you're going to communicate or you're not. A lot of people are too lazy now. They don't understand the art and the intimacy that comes out of communication um, and the direction and purpose that comes from that as well. There's a lot of mute people running around. They can't get out of their own head. They don't even know what's in their own head let alone be interested about what's in yours. Um, and so you've got to be aware of the manipulative behaviours, the negligent behaviours and the positive behaviours and constructive behaviours that need to be navigated with the person that you're with. And if you discuss these things, you can refine things down to a situation where everybody's happy and everybody's flourishing. But if you're with a self-destructive person, and there's plenty of these around, and they're covert. They know how to function in their dysfunction. They present themselves as functional, but underneath they're not. Then you need to work this out really quick and make some serious decisions and keep it moving to find someone that's healthy. Because not everybody is dysfunctional. There's some beautiful, wonderful, healthy people out there that want to love and contribute and get somewhere in life. And you will be able to together. It's as simple as that. So it comes down to masterminding, not just yourself, but the person that you're with together, formulating a chemistry and values and vision that's really going to be rewarding for both of you and enjoying the journey in a way in which everybody's benefiting. Everybody meaning the two people in the relationship. No outside influences and rubbish and garbage, but having this beautiful sanct sanct sanctity between each other in which both know how to help the other flourish, both appreciate what's coming out of that, both have a value for what's coming out of that and both look forward to seeing each other and building on each other through the power that they're generating by co-mutual, co-understanding and co-harmonious behaviour and intimacy that produces results at work in life. This is a reward of making the effort to not just emotionally, physically, spiritually and intellectually knowing somebody, but deeply, intimately um, reveling in those rewards so that the power you generate between each other when you do become intimate is supernatural so that you go out into life and you make a difference, a positive difference without any barriers or walls or hurdles and you conquer because you've conquered the dysfunction in yourself you've allowed yourself to align in a way in which it's positive for your relationship 
You're being honest, transparent, and willing. And the benefits and the rewards and the power that come from that are surpassed and second to none. There's no substance, weed, alcohol, medication, or anything that can reproduce or copy the power of a strong, loving, sexually intimate, communicative relationship. Find that and you've found something very rare and very powerful that life has to offer. This is Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist on the Pro Brick Exclusive YouTube channel. Bye for now.